In this webinar, I'm going to take you through SharePoint, Teams and Class Notebook, how they all fit together and how you can use them in school. So before we start, it's really important to make sure that you have a long term digital strategy in place to move to the cloud. That will give you some nice clear timeframes for staff and instead of overwhelm them with moving everything tomorrow, you can stage it, you can make sure that everybody is confident using the new system before you roll out the next bit. You might have seen with previous systems you might have had in place in the past that some tech savvy teachers do some amazing things uh, with solutions, but the rest of the teachers just don't use it. So it's really important to bring everybody on that journey with you. And we'll talk about that in the session today, how you can measure user adoption, how you can improve on it, and how you can set some long-term targets to move to the cloud. It's also really important to make sure that teachers have the relevant training and support to use the system. So we go start off in SharePoint. This is our demo site, and this is our SharePoint intranet for Cloud Academy, our demo school. So on the home page, we've tried to add some engaging web parts try and make it really simple and easy for teachers and for students to use. You see I've added some training videos on here, we've got some recent documents, you might have some charts and stuff on the page. So this is just a starting point and as a school user over time they'll start adding their own content to this and decide what the home page is mainly going to be used for. Across the top here we've got the school logo and the school colours and if we open up the mega menu we can see all of the sites and teams that this user has access to. So depending who you log in, in as, you'll see different options in this menu. You can only see the sites that you have access to. So I'm going to take you through the different types of sites and how you might use them. So we've got communication sites and these might be used for publishing information to large groups of people in the school. So for example, you might have school policies, you might have a staff handbook and with those files you want everyone to be able to see them but only certain people can edit those documents and that's where SharePoint communication sites come in really handy. You might have a HR site that has leave request forms, you might have an IT support site that has some manuals and guides that people can see. Um, so if I go into one of these as, as an example, we're going to the staff site. So on this staff site I've got some policies, I've got my staff handbook, I might have a daily or weekly staff briefing promoted on this page or a lunch rotor and again I might have some news that's just relevant for staff in the school. And uh, just as a quick example I'll show you the policies library. So this is a SharePoint library but what I've done is I've added an additional column with an expiry date and I've colour coded it so I can see when these policies are, are up for renewal, when I need to review them and if I wanted to I could even set up a workflow reminder to get an email once these policy dates, uh, once these policies are about to expire I automatically get an email for me to go in and review them. So that's why you might use some SharePoint communication sites, publish information to large groups of people, manage your documents uh, much easier and in a more managed way. And then we've got our collaboration teams. Now these are Microsoft Teams, which we'll come onto the Teams app shortly. Um, they're also available in SharePoint in this mega menu. And depending how your staff want to access the site, they can use either Teams or SharePoint. So collaboration sites are for small groups of people working together. So your communication sites are for publishing information to large groups of people. Your collaboration sites is for teams of people working together. So if you've got a data team uh, and they need a space to collaborate and work together, then you'll create a team for them. If you had a, a, a HR team and again they needed their own private space to securely share documents and work on them together, you'd create a team for them. And the idea behind uh, creating these as separate sites, separate teams, is you've got lots of flexibility, they're scalable, and if you wanted to you could even apply policies to these sites. Uh, for any of your compliance needs. So for example if we had a finance team and all the finance documents need to, need to be kept for seven years as standard then we can apply a retention policy just to the finance site. And the same if you've got any sensitive data 
um, that needs deleting after a few years, again, you could apply a policy to those sites. So it's always good to keep these as separate site collections, separate teams. Now, I would only see the teams that I have access to. So if I go into the data team, again, as a quick example, um, again, I can access this via Teams or SharePoint. I'm going in through SharePoint. Some of your staff, they may be more confident using a website-based interface. And in that case, it's a bit more managed, a bit easier to find your way around. They might use SharePoint. However, some staff might be more confident and want to collaborate with others and use chat functionality. And for them, Teams might be the best way into these documents. But either way is fine. You, know, you can get the best out of both worlds. So I could go into exam analysis, I could work on documents here and later on in the demo we'll have a look at these same documents but from within Microsoft Teams as well. So when it comes to planning these teams out uh, we provide you with a consultancy session to take you through um, a range of sample sites in a spreadsheet and then you can have a look at your own setup your own organization, the teams that you have within that organization and decide which ones you need. The idea is that long term you're replacing some of those file shares that you might have had on site. So in the long term you might save on refreshing hardware, licenses, backups of anything that you use on premise or at least having lightweight versions of them. So those are the non-curricular sites but what about the curriculum resources the teacher learning resources, where do you put those? So we pull the MIS data out, so pull the class data out of the uh, MIS. We work with all UK MISs and from that data, from that class data, we know which subjects are taught in school, who teaches those subjects and which students take those subjects. And we can automatically then create all of the subject sites and teams for you. And we can give access to the relevant teachers who teach them and the students who are enrolled on those subjects. So again, this mega menu column is going to be personalized for the person logging in. So as a student, I'll only see the subjects I take. As a teacher, I'll only see the subjects that I teach. However, if I'm a teacher and I need to cover another lesson, I can still go into the all subjects link here and still jump into any subject area. So let's go into English to have a look. So in the English sites, we've got some staff only document libraries and only staff can access those. We've then got some student facing year group based libraries. Now we feel it's really important to get curriculum leaders involved in the planning of these sites. It'll help give them a bit of ownership over it. It'll, he it'll help design it to how they teach the curriculum and uh, it'll definitely help with user adoption over time. So in this example, we've got year group based document libraries, but some schools, it might be key stage or course based, depending how their curriculum is structured. So we've got year group based libraries. So if I was a student in year 11, I would be able to see year seven, year eight, year nine, year 10 and year 11. So I can revise back through previous years, but I won't be able to see year 12 or year 13. So I can't see any age inappropriate content. And that's all done automatically through that MIS data as students move up and down um, the years or classes in the school. So let's go into year 11. So if you've seen SharePoint or OneDrive before, this is a document library. Um, you can create documents in here. You can drag and drop them and upload them into here. And um, it's really easy to do. Um, I can create brand new documents in this library without having Office installed on my machine at all. So this all works within the browser or if you're using a tablet or phone within the apps. So if I create a brand new Word document, it will open up Office Online. So again, I don't need it installed on my machine. And one thing you'll see is as, as I start typing, it says saving across the top and then saved. So it saves as you go along. And then if I want to, I can give this a title. So I'll call it a, I'll call it Catcher in the Right Review. And I can then go back into that year 11 library and I can see that document that I've created. So here it is, Catcher in the Right Review, created a few seconds ago. So one thing that we do do in addition to what you get out of the box is we apply some additional tagging options into these libraries. So some of those tags are set automatically. So if I was, a, if, if I was dropping a, a document into U11 English, like here, then it will automatically be tagged with 
key stage for year 11 and English because that's where I put it. However, the other tags are completely optional. However, we definitely recommend um, that teachers do tag the documents. And it's something that we do show them in training as, as best practice. Because one thing you'll find is over time, you'll get lots of documents, lots of resources building up in here. You know, these are your long term resource areas that might be here for the next 10 years. We've got some schools with, with over half a million documents in SharePoint. So it's really important to make these sites scalable. You know, as they grow, it's still easy to find those documents and resources. So you can tag these documents really easily. I can select a document, go to the information panel. And again, we try and get some curriculum leaders involved in the planning of these sites because there might be topics that they want to provide and make available for tagging. So one of these topics might be uh, Catcher in the Rye. I can tag that and then I can search for that document using that tag now. It, I could tag it with an exam board, so, you know, AQA. And again, that will help me when I'm searching for those documents. So as, it, as these areas grow over time, people might be using the apps. So they might be using an iPad or an Android device. And if they're using those devices, they're probably just going to be using the search functionality to find those documents. So search is really important in SharePoint. And out of the box, it's really good anyway. You know, I can search for my and men and, and it'll bring back all the documents with the words of my and in the title, but also in the contents of those documents as well. However, I might want to search a different vertical. So I might want to search of my and men AQA resources. And again, if I've tagged it with AQA, those resources will come back in the search results. You might also find that, you know, if you've worked in schools before, you've, you find, you know, sometimes file shares can become a bit messy over time with complex folder structures. So if you do tag those documents, then we automatically add in some additional views to group it by those tags. So I can group it by exam board. It will flatten out the entire folder structure and just group the documents tagged with AQA together, add Excel, OCR, even if they're in a really complicated file structure, um, we'll still be able to find those documents, even if they're stored in a folder inside a folder inside a folder. So it's just trying to make those documents as easy as possible to find. Some of the nice functionality of using SharePoint is you get a built-in recycle bin. And if you delete a document, you'll be saved in that recycle bin for 93 days. So you can get that document back within three months. There's also a version history. So every time you edit a document, it creates a new version of that document. So all I have to do is go into version history and I can restore back to an earlier version if I've made a mistake to that document or somebody else has. So you've also got your staff document areas in these subject teams as well. And if I go into staff resources, again, you might need to tag these documents with uh, particular document types. And again, that can help you because when you get this complex folder structure in here, I can just group it by category and I'll strip out that folder structure and show me all the incident reports together, all the lesson plans together, all the meeting minutes together, even if they're in folders inside folders inside folders. So it's just about making these sites more scalable, thinking about future planning and using these long term resource areas over a long period of time. So that's SharePoint and that's all the long term resource areas that you're going to use on a regular basis. And the other aspect of, you know, the Office 365 solution is class teams and extending the classroom. Um, and nowadays as well, obviously a bit more remote learning in there as well. So um, to make it easy to get to Teams and to get to all the features within Teams, we've got our class dashboard, which we can get to from the mega menu. I'm logged in as a teacher, so it's showing me all of the classes that I teach. If I was logged in as a student, it'll show me all the classes that I'm enrolled on. Now, if I go into one of those classes, I can see all the students in that class. So this is 11Y English 3, so it's a year 11 English class. And we've put a link on here automatically to the English resources. So that's those long-term resources that we just looked at inside SharePoint. And the rest of the links go straight into Microsoft Teams and straight into the relevant area within Teams. So if I click on Class Team, this opens up Microsoft Teams and it goes straight into 11Y English 3. So if you've not seen Microsoft Teams before, it's a bit like a, a mashup between Skype and or Slack and 
and SharePoint. It's a place where you can chat, you can collaborate and you can work on documents together. But the education version is slightly different. You get a bit more functionality such as assignments and class notebooks that we'll go through shortly. So you've got a group posts section and this is where the whole class can discuss topics together. So the teacher might want to ask a question, you know, it, uh, and I can tag people in this message as well. So it might, it might be, um, I might want to tag the entire class instead of an individual. So I'll tag this English class. Um, what did you think of the book? And because I've tagged them, they will get an instant notification on their phone or tablet if they've got the app installed. If they haven't, in a couple of hours, they'll get a, an email to just to let them know that they've got a missed notification. So this tool's really good if you've got students who are too shy to put their hands up in class, maybe they're too anxious to speak in front of other people. This will open it up and make the, the discussions a bit more accessible to them. Um, they can take their time and, and, and measure their response. Now, as a teacher, you can also mute people. So if, if you want to focus your attention on the lesson, you can always mute everybody in the class really quickly and easily, and then they can't take part in these post discussions. As a teacher, I can also use all of the other features here as well. I can share my screen and do a remote video lesson. I can also do that from the calendar as well. We've got some videos on how to do that. I can assign some praise to students. So um, if they've done really well, maybe someone's done some great work. I could again, tag the students. Great presentation today. And then that student will see it. They'll get a notification. So they've been tagged in it and people can react to that as well. Next along we've got the files tab and this is a great place that students can drop off some work for the teacher. So we've got a student work folder and we create a folder for every student within that class. The student can only see their own folder but the teacher can see everybody's. Now actually from our class dashboard if we were to click on a student in the class we can jump straight into their class work area. So I can open in Teams that will open up Microsoft Teams, it will open up 11Y English 3, the Files tab, and go straight into Susan Abbott's work area. So it makes it really easy for the teacher to get there, but also for them to give the instructions to the student on how quickly to get into that student work folder. So the student work folder might be used for things like coursework or classwork, any work that needs a constant to and fro between the teacher and the student throughout that academic year. So it's just a drop off box where people can put some files and both the student and the teacher can see and edit those documents. You've then got the class notebook. And again, inside Teams, it appears in quite a small window. So again, from our class dashboard, we can go straight into the class notebook and it'll open up full screen without even going through the Teams interface. So again, it's making it quicker to get into, making it full screen, more accessible and a bit easier to use. So if you've not seen Class Notebook before, the best way to describe it is a student's exercise book where every student gets their own section and the student can only see their own section but the teacher can see everybody's. And inside these sections the student can take notes, they could do some work in here and the teacher can just stick their head over every student's virtual sh shoulder and see what they've been do doing, what they've been working on. So I can quickly see what the class has been working on just by going into each student's section and looking at the pages that they've been typing up. There's also a content library and this is where the teacher might put things like lesson objectives, they might put some tasks for the students to, to take on here as well. Um, there's some really nice teacher learning tools in Class Notebook as well, um, such as Immersive Reader. Now what this does is, is it strips out all the distractions from the page it will play the text through your speakers. So I can click play and it'll play the text through my speakers. I can change the emphasis of the background. So if I need a high visibility background and maybe Comic Sans, if I've got students with dyslexia, they can select those options so they can see the text easier on the screen. There's also some grammar options. So I can emphasize nouns, verbs, and adjectives. There's even a picture dictionary. So if I click on a word, it'll show me what that word is. So some really nice tools in here that have some evidence behind them that they improve reading comprehension. 
And if you've got international students, there's also the translate option. You could even use this for modern languages where I can translate either an entire word. So that's, I've picked Chinese and it can play it through my speakers in Chinese or I can translate the entire documents. And this is done on a pair user basis. So people can personalize the options in here depending what language uh, they speak. So that's a nice tool built into Class Notebook and that's available inside each class team. So in the assignments tab, you can set assignments or homework for students. Um, a bit like other third party systems you might use quite similar to those. Um, now one thing that we can do is we can pull the parental data out of the MIS, so the parental contact email addresses, and Microsoft will send them, if you decide to turn it on, a weekly email summary of what work has been set to their child, if they've um, submitted it or not, or they returned it back late. So in assignments, we can create a brand new assignment. We can create a self-marking quiz using Microsoft Forms, or we can reuse an existing assignment that we've set in for another group that we teach. So I'll create a brand new assignment. I'll give it a title of Catch It in the Rye Essay. Give them some instructions. And I can attach some resources. So when I click Add Resources, this might be a resource from my own personal OneDrive. It could be a page in Class Notebook. So I can send a page out from Class Notebook and then they can actually, um, when they've submitted the work back to me, it will save that work inside their notebook. I can then attach a link. I can create a brand new file. I can upload documents from my device or I could go to Teams and I can use my long-term English resources that we looked at earlier. Where we've got all our year group folders and I can go into there and I can grab that document that we created earlier, that Catch in the Rye review. So I can attach that as a resource. Now students can't edit that resource, they can just see it. However, if it was a worksheet and I want them to fill it in and return it back to me, I can just let students edit their own copy and then they'll get a copy of that document and they'll be able to submit it back to me. So I'm going to do that. Let's imagine it's a worksheet. I can give them a number of points that the assignment's going to be marked out of. So I'll make that 100. If you want to, you can add in rubrics, which is basically marking criteria. So if you've got those already, you can share them with other members of your department. You can create them in here. You can add your rows and columns, um, your different criteria. And if you do use these, it makes it really easy to mark the work. Because what you do is you put in a marking weight. When you come to mark it, you say creativity is excellent, spelling and grammar is good, and it will auto mark the work for you. The students can also see this rubric, so they'll know exactly what they need to achieve to get a good grade. So it's nice and transparent for them as well. Um, I can assign it to one group that I teach or to multiple groups. I can assign it to all the students in my class or just to a group of them. So if you've got a higher level and intermediate level homework, you can set two different levels. I can set a due date and time. So it might be Tuesday at three o'clock. And there's also some advanced options where you can schedule it. Um, you can allow late hand-ins and all those sort of things. So you've got additional options in there as well. And as soon as you click assign, that will send an instant notification to, the, to those students if they've got the app installed on their phone or tablet. Um, once they've returned it back to you, and they can actually use the app to submit their work back to you really easily. They don't need to be using a desktop or laptop computer. They can just do it from the app. And when they've returned it back to you, you'll see a list of all your assigned work here. And I can just go into one of those, so catching the right essay. And if, if anyone's handed anything in here, I'll see the status is handed in. I can click on their piece of work and it'll bring it up here on the left hand side. And if I want to, I can always annotate the document, annotate the work that they've submitted back to me. And on the right hand side, I can give them some feedback. So I can say, you know, well done. Give them some comments, give them the points that I've given them. Or if it was a rubric, I'll just be picking which criteria they've met. If they've got multiple pieces of work, I'll see them here and I'll be able to switch between them. And when I'm ready, I can return that back to the student and they will get instant notification on their phone or tablet of what feedback I gave them, what points they had. Then I can just move on to the next student and load in their work and review their work. 
So really easy to mark that work. And once you've finished marking your work, you can export that one assignment to Excel if you wanted to. Or I can go to the grade book and I can see all the work that I've set this group throughout that academic year. So you'll be able to potentially pick up trends in here as well. I can click on an individual student and see that student's work throughout that academic year. So if you've got a parents evening, you can always bring this up and you can go through the work that they've done throughout that year in the class. You've also got an insights option here as well that you can add to your class if you wanted to. And this will give you an overview of their activity, their average grades, if they've sent it back to you on time or not, and you can check between different time frames. Now, one thing with these teams, remember these teams are created for all the classes in the MIS every academic year. So you'll probably have a thousand of these created per school every single year. Now, you don't want to be uploading your resources into the files tab for every year 11 English class that you teach every single year, because that'll be a lot of extra work for the teacher. So what we do is we add in an additional tab here for the long-term English year 11 resources. In fact, this is exactly the same area that we looked at earlier where we created our Catcher in the Rye review. And if I click open in SharePoint, you can see it's exactly the same site that we looked at earlier. And this is on that English long-term resource area. So it means that we don't have to keep uploading our work every single time to every single class. The students can see this, a teacher can see it, and even if you just wanted to use Teams, you're still getting the benefits of those long-term subject resource areas that we're creating in the background as well. As part of our tools to help you with your long-term user adoption and measuring how well it's going, we've also got our Assignment Analytics dashboard. This will give you an overview of how well Teams assignments are being used throughout the school. So you'll be able to see the percentage of classes with assignments. You know, is it a large group of people using it or is it still a small group of teachers that are using assignments? What's the average number of assignment per class? You know, was it done on that one training day or are they still using it on a regular basis? And then I can even, at the bottom here, I can sort the this table out so I can see which uh, subject areas are using it the best, which using it the most and which areas might actually need a bit more help. And again, that can feed back into my long-term user adoption plan. You know, who needs the extra training, the CPD time, and I can focus my attention on that so that we get good usage throughout the entire school. So some of the other things that we do inside Microsoft Teams, we can create staff departmental teams. So we create all the subject teams as we saw earlier, like biology, chemistry, but you might also want a departmental team where departments can have their meetings, might have your meeting minutes or your agendas in here, um, your notes, you could even have your virtual meetings if you're remote or working in a different classroom. So you can have your departmental meetings here, you can, you've got a staff notebook where you can keep notes. And we can create departmental teams either at a school level or a trust level. So if you wanted your science teachers across the entire trust to collaborate and work together, we can also create a staff departmental team for the trust. You'll also see that you can see the other non-curricular teams here as well. And one of those we looked at earlier was the data team. So if I'm in the data team, I'll have access to this team and I can go to exam analysis and files. And these are the same files that we saw inside SharePoint, but from within Teams. So as we said earlier, if you're more familiar with a web-based interface and your staff quite, aren't quite ready for uh, Teams yet, they can go in through SharePoint, it's a bit more structured that way. And if they're confident with collaboration, they like using the apps and the real-time chat, then they could go into the same area, but from within Teams and use the features within Teams. So if you go to the education page of our website and scroll down, you'll see all the different packages that we do. And all the packages include everything that I've showed you today. So any new features, any updates, all those web parts, the MIS integration, they're included as part of all of these packages. However, the only difference is the user adoption. And as we said before, um, gold or most popular option is um, aimed at getting good user adoption in the school over the long term. And what we do different in the gold package is we create that long term rollout plan with you to help you uh, get to your digital strategy aims and vision. And what we do is we create a training needs analysis. Uh, so that's a survey that, get, that goes out and we find out the sort of uh, confidence levels of the staff currently. And then from that information, we can help you determine which, which uh, courses you want to put people on. 
We then provide on-site or online training workshops. And these are small sessions for small groups of staff where they can ask questions and they, they watch a quick demo, do a quick task, quick demo, quick task. So they gain some confidence using the different tools. We then go back and do some user adoption reports and we can gather information from the teachers as to any barriers to using it in the classroom or from home, um, any issues that they might have, and also just measure um, how well the adoption is going through the analytic dashboard. And then we can report back to you and highlight any problems, you know, good, the good stuff and the bad stuff, and that can then feed back into your long-term digital strategy. It might be the case you're moving too fast and you need to slow down a bit. It might be the case you're moving too slow and staff want to go further ahead or it might highlight issues like particular departments that need a bit more help. So the idea is to keep working on that user adoption over the long term, not just release it overnight, but actually give staff a bit of confidence using it. Don't overwhelm them at one time, get them confident using it um, over the long term. The Platinum package is the same as Gold, except we have additional on-site training workshops. We also do a personalized video recording of those training sessions for you to put on your site. Now we do do uh, free video uh, training sessions which we put on your site as standard. So you'll see you get a, a load of um, free training resources. These are available on YouTube as well um, of how to use Teams for Education and SharePoint Education. We still find it is important to have those one-on-one -on -one sessions uh, with teachers so you can talk them through any issues and make sure that they are confident using it and measure their user adoption over time. If you're a trust, um, so if you're a group of schools, multi-academy trust or a, a group of schools, then we can also create a trust level site uh, for the school. So you might have um, central services within a trust that the trust supply to those schools and you might also have groups of uh, people that work together across the schools as part of the trust. So what we can do, you can have as many school intranets and school class sites that you want um, inside a single tenancy. However, we can also create a central trust area where all, all schools within the trust can access it. They can get access to vital central services. Maybe it's uh, catering information. Um, it might be IT help guides, you know, it could be finance information. Anything that you want to publish to large groups of people will be those communication sites within central services. And the central team sites, these will be where teams of people work together across a trust. They might be in different schools, um, but they work together in those areas and they need a space to collaborate, to work together. And again, that will be part of your central teams that sit at that trust level, uh, part of the internet. If you are a trust, you might also decide to open up some of the schools for collaboration, maybe to help improve standards and improve content that you have. You might decide that um, maybe all the primary schools or all the secondary schools might be able to visit each other's subject resource sites. And again, that's an option that we can explore if that's something you want to do to improve collaboration across the trust. So I hope that's given you a good overview of how you might use the different packages, how you can create the plan out those long term resource areas. So it's not just a solution for the here and now, but also long term, moving away from some of your file servers that you might have in school. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. And the email address is on the screen now. And uh, we can always arrange a one on one demo to talk you through and to answer any questions that you might have.